Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel. If you are a regular subscriber, thank you for returning. If you're brand new and have just stumbled across me by accident, welcome. I hope you, you find value here and decide to subscribe. This is going to be a relatively short video in that it's another episode, installment of the Celebration of Women journal that I am attempting to do in a start to finish series. So you may remember that if you saw that video, you know that my initial cover is this one and it was using a grocery shopping bag. It's got batting. I had enough fabric that I made these two pockets, a pocket on either side, and used this linen-like neutral fabric on the inside to keep all my possibilities open. So as I've been gathering stuff up, looking, reminding myself what I have saved over the last couple of years, and uh, looked at the sheer amount of stuff that I have and the number of ideas I have, it occurred to me that I've got much more than will go into one journal. And I also don't know, oh, in case you missed that, this, my intention here was to sort of make this a wraparound. Uh, I won't know that till obviously I get my papers in. <clears throat> so because I had only bought probably, I don't know, half a yard of this fabric and really loved it because of its graphic nature and all those faces. I thought, what am I, what am I saving that for? So I just um, spread it out and quite often I like working at my ironing board because it's a comfortable height. It's not that big, it's portable. And I basically laid out in what I thought were, you know, kind of reasonable sizes, so I don't have to do too much work in terms of trimming. I basically used up, um, other than, you know, pieces like this, I basically used up all the fabric. And so that in itself creates a, a pretty self-satisfying feeling. Now, I've just uh, finished sewing around these and You'll see that on each of them, well, except the original one, I've used two rows of stitching. And that was, you know, just a bit of insurance probably that I was actually catching all the layers because in each case, there are multiple layers. And this tiniest one, which will end up like so, I've, um, oh, I had a piece of, you know, that felt that, that craft felt that you can buy at the dollar store that is... It's so thin, it's practically see-through. I used a piece of that behind the front fabric. I sandwiched some dyed cheesecloth in it just to sort of, you know, gussy up the edges a bit. And then I used a piece of book page that I think, no, I guess that's just napkin, that I had attached or decoupaged some uh, napkin to. Now, this feels pretty good. I, I don't know. I guess I'm trying to think. Oh, I probably want to cover up the word stinkweed. I think that um, I'm going to have to decide whether or not this needs a coat of uh, gel medium or something for protection. Right now, I really like the feel of it. I suspect that I might have sanded it down when I first did it, but that's, um, you know, that remains to be seen. So this will uh, accommodate pages, I think, that are roughly almost four inches square. So that's a really good size for using up itty bitty pieces. This one... Okay, this one is a 9 by 12 envelope, and I used a batting, no, I used an, a 9 by 12 piece of felt, and I, um, you maybe know that I love these intricate, scrolly type designs, so I used a piece of a scrapbooking paper. And on this one, I have this, you know, a large, well, a remnant of this lace, 
and I basically just sort of very roughly cut it to size. Now I have to say that if I get, I guess I'm a, um, a student of the, you know, measure twice, cut once school of <laughs> carpentry and, and paper crafting, I am always afraid of cutting things too small. And I, I guess maybe I should get over that because we know that there are fixes for virtually anything that, that uh, <laughs> any boo-boos that we make. <clears throat> However, if I hold this up, you can probably see that's where the envelope, well, it's a white envelope and the white felt end. So I like this, this frayed edge and you can see it, it unravels really quite easily. Now, I guess as I, right now this doesn't bother me at all and, and the bits of lace extend past it. At this end, the bottom side, I'm a lot closer to the edge. On the sides, probably, well, even closer, perhaps. Now, I did, I should say that I did use glue stick to tack down all of the layers. So, you know, glued felt to envelope, glued fabric to felt, and so on. Again, not uh, an incredibly perfect job of gluing. It was mainly to tack because even though I this dried overnight or perhaps it was two nights, I don't want to gunk up my sewing machine needle if I can help it. I just, I didn't want to use pins, which I could have because that would be the typical, you know, seamstress type approach. So I just glued this stuff in place. I will decide what I do with this. If I end up trimming this part down, then I could easily, you know, leave a few rows of thread and, and um, you know, fray it again. But we'll see how that goes. So for those people who love their <laughs> journals noisy, uh, this one qualifies. It's the, you know, the crinkliness of the envelope. I am not... At this point, I'm basically leaving these journals flat simply because I don't know how thick a spine I met, might end up with. Now, this size, 9 by 12, of course, accommodates an 8.5 by 11 paper folded in half very nicely. So it will probably end up being a one signature journal. But again, I don't want to shut down any options at this point. And then this was the final piece. And if you've watched any YouTube videos, you know how very popular the whole idea of, um, you know, the other format, the tall, skinny uh, journals has become. This is probably, where's my ruler? Probably wider than normal. Well, not by much. It's 11, if you, I don't know if you can see that, 11 and 3 eighths um, by, well, 11 and 3 quarters. <clears throat> so a bit of an oddball size. Now, what I did here, this, uh, the, um, there is no batting. All I used was the backing, no, the cover of a watercolor paper pad. So some rigidity to that. This is a piece of, um, what do you call it, scrapbooking card stock. And again, I laid uh, out some cheesecloth just to um, add some, add some interest to the edge. Now my stitching, as you can see, is not perfect. I don't know what was going on here but we know that that is not a deal breaker by any stretch of the imagination. It adds to that homemade quality, and if it really bothered me, I could cover it with something. And that might be a possibility. Um, pretty close to the edge here. Don't think I want to do any additional trimming. Uh, the cheesecloth is probably too wide, but again, I didn't want to trim. Oh, see? Here, you can see that the 
that the inside paper is showing. So I don't know if that was, if I could have stretched this fabric a bit more when I was gluing it or whatever. I may end up having to trim that, but I didn't want to attempt that until I had first sewn it because, you know, that could become a very um, crooked and unsightly, um, you know, sometimes when you just try to take a sliver off with scissors and you, you're working at that awkward angle, uh, it could end up looking worse than it does now. So what I may do for the time being is just leave that and maybe decide that, oh, the perfect solution is going to be, you know, a strip of paper or some cotton uh, crocheted lace or something. So I'm not going to panic just yet. I did, you know, again, I just went, came, created this short video today just, I guess, to plant the seed that if you're going to go to all the trouble of collecting materials or if you've been saving something for a particular theme journal for years and you've got oodles and oodles of stuff, it makes a lot of sense from a an efficiency, from a work, you know, work uh, scheduling perspective to try to do more than one at the same time so we will see how that progresses um, we know that it's not a linear process and we know that it it can be a chaotic process to create like you know this this sort of stuff but it also is a lot of fun so I'm not putting any pressure on myself and I hope you're not putting any pressure on yourself or on me for that matter to do this in any particular way. It will unfold as it unfolds. And I'm just really glad that I've used up all that fabric, except for, you know, like I said, I might have left a little strip somewhere to do fabric flips or, or who knows what, but I just can't see it at the moment. So basically, I think I'll stop there. When we next uh, meet, in this series, you will see a bunch of the ephemera that I have already created. I've also prepped some some bits of uh, supplies to, to be able to do something, you know, with you, in front of you. And uh, yeah, I'm excited about this coming together. In the meantime, I have been, you know, pulling together pages for the signatures. Now, of course, I'm going to need many more because of the... Um, the additional covers but um you know it, it's easier to do it at this stage of the game than after the fact when you're when you're kind of you know maybe up to your eyebrows and thinking okay I've had enough of this on to the next thing um it just it it made sense and I guess we'll see how this works out for me um okay I think we'll stop there I will just oh where is it I'll just end again with my usual um you know ask um that if you find value here that you please consider subscribing i i don't have any illusions that any one person is going to watch every single minute of every single video but i do hope that you find either that my my take or my philosophy or my approach is worth checking into periodically and I certainly appreciate the support and the comments and uh, the interaction with those of you who are watching. So um, thank you. Take care of yourselves. Keep crafting. Have a wonderful day. Use what you have. Make multiples. And um, live happily ever after. What more can I say? Thanks. Bye-bye.